Roxo Media House. From the Flying Tea Club Studios at Roxo Media House, this is Frogs Today. Featuring special guests, associate head basketball coach, Tony Benford. Frog volleyball star, Callie Williams. President of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Gary Stoken. And we'll get you up to speed on news and notes from TCU Athletics. And now, here's your host, the voice of the TCU Horned Frogs, Brian Estridge. Wednesday edition of Frogs Today starts right now here for the Flying Tea Club Studios. Welcome in. we got a busy day we got to get into. we got some volleyball we got to talk about. We're going to talk bowl games a little bit later on. There's a whole bunch of sports right in the middle of things right now, including soccer in the NCAA tournament. We'll visit on that a little bit later. But first, most recent outing was last night for the TCU men's basketball program. Kicking off the 22-23 season, they do it with a win over Arkansas Pine Bluff to open the year. That's the 15th straight season opening victory for the Horn Frogs here at TCU. Right now, our man Tony Benford joins us, associate head coach of this TCU men's basketball program. Kind enough to give us some time. Let's dive right in. Tony, I was telling you all fair, last night was the perfect example of how college basketball has changed because of the transfer portal. Am I right? Yeah, no, no doubt, Brian. The one thing about Arkansas Palm Bluff, and I give them a lot of credit. I mean, they obviously they played extremely well and uh, were well coached. They have... Uh, to only had two returning players, uh, you know, that had that 11 transfers and they added some really good transfers. And I knew, uh, you know, the guys they added, all those guys came from, you know, solid programs that were, that they were pretty uh, good players at their programs. They were, uh, you know, they had some guys that could really shoot the basketball on their team, uh, on their roster. And, and they did a great job last night, obviously making 11 threes in the first half, 13 in the game. But you can, you look around the country last night and, you know, a lot of, uh, Teams really struggled. Some teams lost uh, to buy games last night, and uh, we were fortunate to uh, come out in the second half, play a lot better, and was fortunate to you know get some stops when we needed it and, and to win the game uh, last night. Yeah, I looked around the league. Oklahoma got beat by Sam Houston. It's crazy how that has worked out already. And it, it, Again, it's parody in college basketball. I kind of like it. You as a coach, I know you'd like to say, hey, we want to stay, you know, don't mind the separation. But as far as a college basketball fan is concerned, you got to like it that on any given night, you're going to get a close ball, ball game. Well, there's no doubt. See, what you, what you have is you have older guys. You know, they've added they, – all those guys are added were up class. Yeah. Uh, they had another guy that didn't play that led the country in three-point shooting uh, – field goal attempts two years ago. Wow. You know, so they, they – uh, again, Bozeman and his staff uh, over there in Arkansas Pine have done a great job of adding quality players. And, and you just look around the country. If you can add an older roster – I mean, uh, older uh, veteran players to your roster – and it, it, if you have a couple of returning guys like the porn guards, a, kid, a guy that's been in their program three years, are really solid. You know, you, they filled those other boys, you know, at the, at the guard spots and the forward spots. And, and then they added another the center big kid in there, did a decent job for him. So you can really improve your roster uh, over, over a, a, a season. Tony, we were talking about uh, last night's game. It's interesting because you had the Horn Frogs struggling to shoot the ball early. Arkansas Pine Bluff kind of playing loose and free, and you mentioned the fact they made the 11 threes in that first half. I thought the Frogs were, candidly, kind of tight. The expectations are super high. You're playing in front of the home crowd. You know, this one, there's a high level of expectation to go out there, and sometimes when you have that, you, you, you tend to not play loose and free with the basketball, right? Well, no, no, no doubt. I mean, I thought our guys were a little tight, and I thought uh, you would have been playing well. Obviously, we had the two scrimmages, and one scrimmage with Alabama, which we were really, really good in. Uh, you know, in that scrimmage against Alabama and then uh, the expedition of the night against uh, Paul Quinn. I thought uh, last night the guys came out maybe a little bit tight. I don't think we, we didn't do a great job uh, initially sharing the basketball. You know, the ball, we've been doing a great job of moving the basketball, executing offensively, and we did not do a great job of that uh, in the first half. I thought we had some, you know, we didn't get, they didn't get any easy baskets. But, yeah. but 
the and then defensively we had too many breakdowns uh, guarding a three three point shot. You know, we we talked about we knew these guys were going to be guys that could get really great catch and shoot guys, and we didn't do a great job with our closeout. Not only being there, but making guys put the ball on the floor, uh, getting to their shooters. So again, I get those guys credit, but our guys, uh, I think we'll be better moving forward. I thought that you know we had you no know, great effort in the second half and. Uh, Thought we did some things uh, positive there for sharing the ball in the second half. I thought we had more assists in the second half, and so we got to continue to execute offense. When we got to be solid defensively, and uh, we just can't let guys get <laughs> get three point shots off uh, uncontested. We just had too many breakdowns. Yeah, I thought Mike was re- working really hard in that first half too to keep you in the ball game, penetrating, getting to the rim, going to the free throw line. That's what kind of kept you in it early. And in the second half, I thought Emmanuel Miller kind of got in a groove offensively that carried you through a stretch there in the second half. No, there's no doubt. Mike, Mike did a good job. There's a lot of pressure on Mike right now with Damon not being available. You know, those two guys are two headed monsters, so to speak. And and Damon gets this with Damon in there, we're getting a lot of easy baskets because he pushes the ball and transitions, he advances it, he gets in the lane, and now it's a lot of pressure on Mike to do that. And uh, I thought Hadi was trying to do a he did an admirable job, but you know, Damon is you know, puts a lot of he really helps because he's with his experience at that position. But I thought Mike did a great job in the first half, uh, you know, uh, getting us getting us uh, you know uh, easy baskets at times. But I thought Emmanuel really stepped up in the second half, hit some big shots, start coming out hitting that three initially, and we got on offensive glass and got some putbacks. And we got well, one thing we got to do, Brian. We just talked about it as a staff. We got to get the easy bass. We got to get Eddie some touches uh, down low. He, you know, we only had two, uh, I think, field goal attempts, so we got to get him the ball down there some. So that opened the end. Stuck. You know, we talk about getting paint touches every game. We have a number that we try to get, and uh, you know, we barely hit that number last night. But we got to get the one of the ways to get paint touches, obviously, off penetration. But you got to throw it in the post, and so we got to do a better job of that. And I I think we will move it for uh, we will do that uh, on Friday night. And here's a great thing too with Eddie is he doesn't always have to score because he's such a great passer from mm-hmm. the post too that he's going to find guys that are open. He's going to find the easy shot. Exactly, and that's yeah. the thing. I mean, he's got to be more physical on his seals, and they were where they fronted him in the post a little bit, and they were really. Uh, uh, sagging in on the weak side uh, at times, you know, making it tough for him to get catches down there. But we got to get the ball in there to him. And then one of the things that Eddie can do to help himself too, we talked about it, and, and obviously with him a little bit later about it, we'll go with film. Uh, but he's got to, you know, when he said those ball screens, sprint, not only Eddie, Eddie and, uh, and X, there's Xavier too. So when they said a ball screen, sprint to the rim, got to be first yeah. to the rim and seal so we can get the get him on the basketball uh, as he's rolling to the basket at times too. So he is unselfish. That's why we got to give him the ball. We got to throw in the basketball, and uh, we, we're going to do that. Hey, grab your pen right on your desk. I want you to go ahead and write this down. I'm going to go ahead on record. Esther just saying Pine Bluff wins the SWAC this year. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, they're, they're good. I'll tell you what, yeah. when they get the one guard back that did not yes. play last night, they're going to be pretty good. And, uh, you know, Texas Southern is always good in that league, obviously, in Southern. So, uh, they'll be – I think they'll be in the mix. Uh, they're yep. going to, they have Oklahoma on, on – uh, on Friday night, but you got it. You better guard the three-point line if you could play in those guys. Speaking of Friday night, got Lamar coming into town. What can you tell us about this group? Well, they, they got a young group. Uh, coach Brooks is a really good coach. You know, he's yep. at the University of Houston, and uh, he's got a group coming in. They're young and, and, and a little bit inexperienced right now, but they're going to come in and compete. They played last night against a Division II opponent. I think they won about two or four points. But, you know, we, we, we got to it's, – it's about us getting better. You know, we got to come in tomorrow, have a great day of practice the next two days, and really get, uh, you know, work on our execution offensively, try to get, you know, in our transits, try to get some easy baskets and kind of clean up some things on the offensive end. And then defensively, we got to be solid. You know, we could be a great uh, defensive team, and we got to get back to that. And then offensively, we didn't rebound the ball. We had 39, but only 11 offensive rebounds. We want to lead the country in offensive rebounds. So our guys, we got some great offensive rebounders, you know, Michael P. Maybe Eddie, obviously, and Emmanuel. So we got to get those Chuck O'Bannon, get those guys going to the glass. So uh, we're going to get back to the execution and, and really, you know, worrying about what we could do to, to improve ourselves. All right. Good news is Horn Frogs one and zero to start the year in men's basketball. Coach Tony Benford, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for hopping on here with us. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me on. All right, he's the best. There he goes. Tony Benford joining us here. Uh, coming up, Callie Williams will join us. That volleyball star with some big news in, on uh, that front. We'll get into that as that season starts to wind down. But first, speaking of men's basketball, they spent a little time last week at Tanglewood Elementary, signing autographs, playing games, just getting to know the kids at Tanglewood. Here's some sights and sounds from that visit from T- TCU men's basketball as we go to break now here on Frogs Today. Hey! 
Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Urban Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Mention the Frogs Today Show and get 10% off anytime and order online at daveshotchicken.com. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Frogs Today continues now here at the Flying Tea Club studios on the Wednesday. Glad you've joined us for this one. Tend to talk a little volleyball right now. we got some news on the schedule front coming up here shortly. But first, I get to talk to the Big 12 Player of the Week. How about this? Callie Williams, how are you? I'm good. Welcome how are you back. Doing? Thank good to you. see you. What an honor. I mean, that's a great honor. I mean, that, that's a tribute, though, to the way this team's playing right now, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, I think... Um, really cool to get the recognition, but I think ultimately it's just a testament to how great our entire team played this week. I think it's pretty cool when a setter gets the award that just proves that, you know, passers and defenders are playing well enough to give me opportunities and hitters are taking advantage. I mean, I think that just means all the hitters played so good they couldn't just pick one. So we, so I get the recognition, but it's it, really, like it's it. the it's the team that deserves the award. We talked with uh, we talked with your dad, the coach, uh, just a couple of days ago, and one of the things we talked about with him was you want your team kind of playing its best volleyball at the right time, the Absolutely. crescendo, if you will. Yes. And this group, it feels like, is doing just that, getting better every week. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. I think if you look at, I mean, we're just looking at film, you know, getting ready for Baylor on Saturday, but just watching last time we played them and how much better we've gotten mm -hmm. even since then, and then to even go back to the beginning of preseason. I mean, this team has just gotten better and better every single week, playing better every week, feeling more cohesive, more like a unit, and so things are starting to come together, and I think definitely at the right time. What do you attribute that to? I mean, uh, obviously there's been some team building things that have taken place. There's a lot of good coaching happening, but what is it? What has brought this group together, you think? I think um, just more experience. I think we have a lot of new pieces, and so at the beginning of the season, a lot of us had never played together, you know, didn't have a lot of Big 12 or even NCAA like, experience, so just coming together, getting that experience throughout the year, and then and then part of it, just maybe luck, maybe skill, just coming together at the right time. All right, I'm going to talk technical with you here. We're going to talk X, we're going to talk volleyball X's and O's. Awesome. Because you guys have gone to a 5-1 rotation, right? Yes. I want you to explain that to everyone because since you've gone to that rotation, you guys are like 7-3, and three, right? Yes, So sir. what's the difference there? So we started the season in a 6-2, which means there's – six hitters and two setters so the setters play back row which means there's always three hitters in the front row mm -hmm. so six in total um, a five one is one setter um, which i'm still setting in the front row so right. now it's five hitters so i think it changes the way um, our offense can work you know one less hitter can be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on the team you know one setter versus two setters could be an advantage or a disadvantage but i think for our team it's worked out because you know, Kenzie's so great, like she's still getting to be on the court, which is such a huge advantage for yeah. us. Um, even though she's not in the same setting role, we get to use the advantages of the skills that she does have in the back row. And so just it's all kind of coming together and it's just worked out this way. I was going to say, this is coach taking a look at his personnel and saying, okay, I'm going to adjust to fit my personnel at this point and exactly. it's paid off, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You didn't get a chance against Texas when they were number one. And I know we were all kind of super excited about that game. And uh, unfortunately it gets canceled. Uh, hopefully you see them though a little bit later on. Oh right? yeah. yeah. We, we hope so. I think, it would be pretty cool if we could have two uh, Big 12 teams in the national championship. That'd be okay, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Baylor coming up. Uh, for folks who don't know, that's your old school. It is. Means a little yes, something sir. more or does it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's exciting just to get opportunities to play them. Um, one, it's special to me because, you know, I was a part of that program for three years. I have close relationships with the coaching staff and girls on the team, so it's fun to get to play against them. And obviously, Jason was there, yeah. so it means something to him too. But I think it's really cool to get to play this last year for my dad, where we both have Baylor ties, and kind of show him something that I don't think 
they're expecting from right. a from a TCU team. Yeah. So I'm super excited. I love that game's been moved to two. The match has right two p.m. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, and I, I love the fact that uh, uh, Jason said, "Hey, we we're, we're moving it to two. Baylor agreed to it. We're moving it so we can watch the football game that <laughs> yeah. night. Right? That's how I'm, that's good. I, I love that, man. Everybody's bought in, and and absolutely. it's been fun to watch. And I know looking forward to a great crowd for that one as well. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the year of the frogs. We yeah. want to give we want to give our fans an opportunity to watch all the sports. So. I love it. I love it. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Congratulations on being Player of the Week. Thank you. What do you get to watch? You. You know, what, do you, what are they sending you, TV? Yeah, right? I yeah. wish. Yeah. No. Maybe just a little certificate <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, I yeah. love it. All right, we look forward to the Baylor match coming up on Saturday. Hey, uh, we are just, what, a couple of months away now from the indoor season for track and field. we got a couple of guys that are ready to get going. As a matter of fact, uh, that t team that finished third in the 4x400 in the Big 12 outdoors last year, they're, well, they want to move on up the ladder a little bit. We caught up with Ethan Brown. Here's a visit with him right now. Oh, most definitely outdoor track. Indoor, it makes me feel like I'm doing the 800 meters when I have to do the 400 and go around twice. So I'm just like, anything that stops me feeling like an eight or anything above the 400, I'm happy to do. I miss my family quite a lot sometimes, but I think mainly it's my mum's food. I know that sounds a bit shallow, but no, it's my mum's food that hurts me out here personally. My pet peeve out here really is the cheese. The cheese tastes so, so, so plastically and fake over here, and it makes it very difficult to enjoy cheese based um, foods. We ran, we come third, but it was my fault that we came third. We probably could have won it. And I do think about that quite often, but I think it was definitely my lack of, um, lack of strength that year, because I missed quite a lot of training through injury. So I was a bit behind, almost definitely. Especially since it feels like it's been so long since you've been able to race. So that excitement of the race is coming back up and the whole competition atmosphere, and mainly the travel with the team, because our team is a lot of fun to travel with. It's quite, it's quite a lot of us, a lot of characters, a lot of personality, so it, it's really nice to travel with the team, so yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best tasting, sugar-free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. For exclusive interviews and content on TCU Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Frogs Today continues here for the Flying Tea Club Studios. Time to talk a little football. Obviously, we got our football intensive Friday coming up. We'll break down the matchup between the Horn Frogs and the Texas Longhorns coming up at 6.30 in Austin on Saturday night. But right now, we talk a little bigger picture here. That includes the Horn Frogs. Gary Stoken joins us. He is the CEO and all-around executive director of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Kind enough to join us right now. Gary, good to see you, man. How are you? We're doing great, Brian. In a great time of the year. It really is. And for the Horned Frogs now to be number four in this college football poll, the college football playoff poll, essentially, if you will, uh, what does that mean in your mind as far as looking ahead to what could happen down the road for TCU? Well, obviously, having TCU back in 14, which was the first game of the, B, of the uh, CFP against Ole Miss, all I remember is that frog that the lights on the frog coming out of that tunnel and, and, and the, the, the frog uh, logo. Um, and then I read up about the frog and saw where that, that blood comes out of his eyes and poisoned you. And I'll tell you what, scared the, scared the heck out of me. But uh, no, I give Sonny Dykes all the credit in the world, his staff, the team, what they've done this year is tremendous. They put themselves in a great position, obviously huge, Huge game this weekend, but like you said, TCU at number four. It's uh, the playoffs are taking place right in front of our eyes. You know, you think about that trip back in 2014, the Horn Frogs there in Atlanta. That was a great experience for TCU fans. A terrific game for the Horn Frogs. Kind of another coming out party for this program. Uh, they could look forward to much the same if they head back there, right? Well, I tell you, we love the TCU fans. They they descended upon Atlanta in droves and we enjoyed hosting them. Um, you know, for us, we've had the ACC SEC for so long, which before we joined the CFP 
but it's so nice to now have TCU, Michigan, Washington, you know, Michigan State, all these different teams coming from around the country into Atlanta, you know, to be able to go to the College Football Hall of Fame, for us to show them Southern hospitality, play in what I think is the best stadium in the world right now, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, um, in a semifinal game to play, to go to the national championship. It's, it's a wonderful atmosphere, a wonderful opportunity for TCU. That College Football Hall of Fame is amazing, that entire complex down there. And as you mentioned, it is really the college football capital of the universe now. That's what Atlanta's become, hasn't it? Well, Brian, I appreciate you saying that. We've worked very, very hard with the Hall of Fame, with the kickoff games, with the, you know, elevating ourselves with the semifinal games and, you know, the national championship in 17, and now we'll have the national championship back in 25. So uh, we love college football here. Give me some sense of the analytics of this process, Gary. I mean, there's a lot that, that goes into it. You, you and I don't necessarily have an understanding of all that goes in, but this is – they've really sort of taken the – they've taken the opinion out of it, have they not? And, it, it, and it's really objective in their determination. Well, it really is a great process led by Bill Hancock and Boo Corrigan, the chairman, this year. I've had the opportunity to go down and sit in the room in Gaylord, Texas, and do the mock selection. And it's really unique how they do it. They ask everybody to come in with their top 25. And then they say, okay, give us your top three. So everybody, everybody inputs their top three into the computer and the computer will spit it out. Then they say, okay, give us your next four. And then your next four and your next four. You get to a top 25 and then everybody in the room has a chance to look at that. And if someone believes strongly enough that that team is not ranked high enough or a team deserves to be ranked somewhere else, you make a case. If someone agrees with you, they open the voting back up again, and they go through the whole process again. They have computer screens with all kind of analytics in front of you. So, you know, you can and, – and when you say, let's put TCU next to Oregon, you can pull both of them up, and you got all the analytics of each team. So you can see wins versus top 10 versus top 25 – their offense ranking, their defense ranking, et cetera. So it really is a great process, and it's tough to get it wrong, although this year I think it could be one of the tougher times the selection committee has had because we've got some great teams out there still this late in the season. Which is why the college football playoff expansion is so important for many folks, and I know it is for you guys there in Atlanta. I think this is going to be a great thing for college football. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, they're, they're working, the commissioners are working hard to try and make it move forward to 2024 and 2025. If that's the case, we would have a quarterfinal game in 24 and then host a semifinal game in 25. And then after the season, the 24 season, Atlanta would host the national championship as well. Oh, wow. That'd be awesome. Hey, let's talk about one other thing. I, I love bowl season. I actually love the moniker bowl season that uh, all you bowl guys have come up with. I think that's great to market it together. It is a wonderful, what, four-week stretch or so of the season where America is focused on college football. Well, you know, it's ESPNs. They make more money during those weeks of, of bowl season than any other time during the year. Wow. You know, people are off work during the holidays. Great time to watch college football. It's the, the pinnacle of our sport. And, you know, as we move forward in the playoffs, it'll stretch from, you know, the middle of December all the way till kind of the third week in January. So to really stretch it out with the playoff and make it even more meaningful for everybody to watch college football during that time. Gary, I'm looking forward to it. Hope we get to see you in Atlanta, man. That'd be a lot of fun to head back to uh, uh, Georgia. And uh, Horn Frogs just got to keep winning, I think, at this point. Well, good luck to the Horn Frogs. They've done a great job. I'll tell you what. They're the most exciting team in the country. They, they bait you for about two quarters, and then they just, I don't know, they wear you out or they just uh, open up that offense. It's been fun to watch this year. 
It has been that. Gary Stoker joining us from the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl here on Frogs Today. Speaking of the Horned Frogs and postseason, uh, the women's soccer program continues to advance. Now to their seventh straight NCAA tournament. They'll crank up later on the week in a postseason play. We caught up with Eric Bell. His team taking one game at a time, but he likes what he's seeing. First off, I'm very happy and proud of our group for being uh, recognized to be invited to the tournament is, you know, why they came to TCU to, to compete for national championships. And it's our seventh year in a row, and I couldn't be happier. Super exciting. Um, I'm really happy that my last year here at TCU, I'm able to, you know, finish on a strong note. And I'm really looking forward to this bracket. I think we have some really exciting teams, and I'm excited for Friday um, for us to just go in there and get the job done. UTSA obviously is our first focus, so that's what we're going to focus on right now, but I'm really excited about our bracket. One game at a time, and we're going to focus on, on UTSA as best we can, and then hopefully win that game and move on to the next team, but it's always one game at a time. First, it's win on Friday. Um, I think that that's going to be the number one goal is to get through Friday, and then you know, once we do that, we'll look forward to the next phase, um, but just taking each game as they come. Over the past few games, we've had the theme of finishing in front of goal, and I think that's going to be something that's really important, especially as we advance um, past the first round. So once we get the chances that we get, because we get a lot in every game, we just got to um, be composed enough to finish. Finishing our chances, um, just staying consistent with our play, um, just working really hard together and knowing that, walking in with some confidence. Honestly, the seed is, you know, nice, but I think at the end of the day, it's about us playing and how well we play and advancing to the next round. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain. Refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water. And rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Dave's Hot Chicken is a cult favorite and now has two locations in Fort Worth, Bryant Irvin Road on I-20 and Berry Street at TCU, both owned and operated by Horned Frogs. Mention the Frogs Today Show and get 10% off anytime and order online at daveshotchicken.com. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. For exclusive interviews and content on TCU Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Welcome back into the Flying Tea Club Studios. Let's stick with that football theme a little bit. A couple of awards from this week, recognized by the Big 12. Darius Davis is your special teams player of the week. Darius finished with that 82-yard punt return for a score, obviously. And Johnny Hodges was named Defensive Player of the Week by the Big 12 as well. with His performance against Texas Tech, he was all over the field, was Johnny Hodges for TCU's defense. Big challenge coming up. For the Horned Frogs on Saturday night, 6.30 is that kickoff, of course, TCU in Texas from down in Austin. Let's find out what the coach is thinking. Sonny Dykes is presser. Here's the head coach in his own words. Guys had a great practice today. I felt felt like they were refreshed. Um, and, you know, guys are excited to practice and looking forward, to, uh, you know, to, to playing a, a big game Saturday. So excited about it. You know, that's a that's a hard job as a coach. Sometimes your players want to play, and then your job is to, you know, protect them from himself in in some ways. I think that's, you know, everybody involved in a football program is competitive by nature. Otherwise, you just don't survive. Um, and so I think as coaches, sometimes we all, you know, we got to do a good job of protecting ourselves from ourselves. And sometimes you got to protect the players from themselves. And that's part of uh, you know part of the big picture things that we have to do as coaches is to try to make those decisions that we think is best for, you know, long-term as opposed to short-term. I do think that there's always extra motivation, you know, when you play against a big brand team, whether it's Oklahoma, whether it's Texas, whether it's whomever, um, you know, I mean, they got a lot of Twitter followers and TikTok followers and all that. And, you know, our guys are aware of that. 
Uh, and so, you know, that's just the way it is. I thought our linebackers really played well last week, you know, and I thought Shad really played well. For, for a guy that's fairly limited in his reps at that position, I thought he really played well. And, I mean, Shad's a really outstanding athlete, and he's still learning how to play that position. But, you know, I really liked what I saw last week. I think he did a good job of playing with discipline and, and – you know, that's a hard position to play. You know, you've got to obviously you got to play physical, but you also got to be able to cover people and you got to be able to zone drop and you got to be able to blitz and you got to play physical and tackle and all these different things. And it, it takes a lot of different skills to play linebacker. And I thought, again, Shad has adjusted really well to that position. You know, Tay's just um, Tay's just a really mature guy. It's funny. He and Darius are kind of cut from the same cloth. They're both um, not the biggest guys in the world, but they're both really good football players and they're both really tough, really competitive. Um, you know, Tay is a guy that is incredibly consistent. You know, I think that, that everybody, uh, and in particular our quarterbacks really have an appreciation for him because they know where he's going to be play after play. He's always where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. Um, he's just a model of consistency. He makes plays when he has opportunities to, you know, he's got a really, uh, kind of unique skill set. He can do a lot of things well. Um, and, you know, he's just a really good football player. And I think that, you know, he's one of those guys that the more, the, the farther you get into a season, the more you realize how valuable he is. Quentin's got a lot of confidence, and I think he he brings that to the table. I mean, again, it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier. You know, just a really unselfish guy that shows up every day and works really hard. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that has a lot of talent. Um, and I think everybody in our program appreciates the fact that it's never about him. You know, he could be one of those guys that says, hey, look at me, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, and it's more of we and us and, you know, what can I do to help the team? Sonny Dykes, in his own words, as his team gets ready now to take on Texas on Saturday night. Time now to shift gears, talk a little TCU equestrian. Had a big 16-1 to win over Fresno State in their last outing. They're riding pretty good right now. 5-1 and one to start the season. A big match with UC Davis coming up. We caught up with our equestrian team here on Frogs today. I like the mentality and the headset going into today. Um, I'm excited to just keep progressing towards the end of the season. I'm proud of my round and flat today. I got to draw Mac and he's one of my favorites. I've really been working on my leg position with him, um, specifically where I keep my leg on him and making sure it doesn't go too far forward. So I focus a lot on that and my position in the flat and just having a clean pattern and riding strongly and confident. I was happy with my performance. I went uh, second on both of my horses, which is kind of tough because they know the pattern by that point. Um, but I think both of them were really listening to me, and um, I was proud of both of them. I love it. I absolutely love it. I've grown up doing it. Um, I really, really train hard, focus on it. Um, I look to my teammates to see, hey, this is what I'm feeling. What do you guys see? And just kind of take what all they have to say and what my coaches have to say. Just keep riding, uh, riding harder. I don't think we can settle and keep looking forward to the next meet. I think I'd like to go over my videos from today and kind of assess and find things that I need to work on in practice going into Davis next week. Um, I'm pretty proud of both of my rides today and I thought I rode confidently and rode the horses as I know them. I say it all the time, just keep doing what you're doing. If it's working, just stay steady. And I've just been really blessed this semester and just want to kind of keep it going. Details, definitely a few things to button up. Um, like I said, I'll rely on my coaches and my teammates. They always have great pointers for me, and um, I'm excited. Well, a true team effort for our equestrian program right now. UC Davis up next for them. All right, that's going to do it for this Wednesday edition of Frogs Today. A lot we jammed in here, right? Don't forget, coming up on Friday, it's our football intensive Friday edition of Frogs Today. We're going to go back in time a little bit. A couple of huge wins for the Frogs in the 60s against the Texas Longhorns, and two of the stars from those games are going to be in studio here in the Flying Tea Club studio on Friday. Can't wait to visit with those guys. All right, until then, we encourage you to like, subscribe, comment, and share from Frogs Today. Don't forget to subscribe to both the website and to the YouTube channel, all right? Find out all you need as the Frogs get ready for Texas at our website, frogstoday.com. For our entire crew, I'm Brian Estridge. Have yourself a great night. Frogs Today is brought to you by the Flying Tea Club, supporting TCU student-athletes, and by Richard's Rainwater. Say hello to the water of tomorrow. Frogs Today is a production of Roxo Media House.
Roxo Media House.